Hi everyone, Jonas Stenstrom here reporting for Rob Nelson from the Norwegian mountains up here in Scandinavia lives a plant that Rob's been asking me to find and I found it up here in the Doberfjell National Park It's really kind of rainy and gloomy day and we're up in the clouds but here on the ground below me it's all over the place This is Rhodiola rosea also known as rose root this is the mythical plant that the Vikings used to improve their stamina, strength, and longevity. They had a famous saying that goes like this. Eat golden root every day and live for a hundred years. It is literally all over here. Woo, take a look. And it's flowering right now too. Look at this. It's so cool. Right here. This environment where this plant grows is absolutely stunning. I was so sick about the wine down here. This is muskox country, so we're here scouting for muskox. <laughs> just happened to come across this plant, which is really cool. Now, what makes this plant so cool isn't just that it looks really pretty. It's actually what's inside that makes it extremely interesting. Let's take a look at it. The magic of rose root. This amazing plant with a rosy smelling root goes by many names, rose root, golden root, or rhodiola. And it turns out it's a plant you, like the Vikings of the past, might still want to consume because studies indicate it's an amazing adaptogen, can help with your athletic ventures, and seems to be good for anxiety. I'm gonna give you a detailed lowdown on the scientific studies. And if you haven't heard of it yet, well, it's starting to become a popular supplement. Rhodiola rosea. Yep. Impressive S supplement. Very effective tool helping reducing stress. It's an adaptogenic herb. Can help reduce the effects of anxiety. It took the edge off. Allows oxygen to work better in your body. This is where rose root is found. Notice how much of it is in Russia. <laughs> Russians and Scandinavians have been using this plant for a long time, which means it's only fitting that a double-blind placebo study was done with 160 Russian cadets. The ones that were given rose root did not have as much fatigue as those who didn't get rose root. Another double-blind study with medical students during their very difficult exam period showed that those that were given rhodiola actually were more physically fit, showed less signs of mental fatigue, and, turns out, scored a little bit better on their final exams. But before I talk about all of the things the hype is about, let me explain how I first heard about rhodiola. I stumbled upon rhodiola first because it was an ingredient in my nootropic mix that I take in the mornings. This is Magic Mind. I reached out to the company and I said, hey, why don't you sponsor the whole series? I could do a deep dive on every one of the ingredients that is in this drink. And they said, sure. I did start with lion's mane and cordyceps, some of the mushrooms that I know really well, and now I'm moving on to the plants. So in saying that, you might think, oh, maybe this is going to be a biased presentation of rhodiola. That's not true. I'm just going to show you what has been done and what you need to know about this fascinating plant. You see, I'm a biologist first, so I'm going to look at the biology of the plant and then we'll move through to what the new studies say about how it affects human physiology. And this is a drink I take in the day, but they also have a new drink that you can take at night. If you want to try both shots, you can get the bundle with 45% off using this link, magicmind.co slash stoneagemjan. Now, rhodiola or rose root was one of the things in this morning mix that I had never heard of. I definitely know it's close relatives because I grew up in the mountains, but not rose root in particular. So before I dive into the science, let's start first with a quick botany lesson because it is a fascinating plant. Rose root is part of a group of plants lumped into the family Crassulaceae, otherwise known as the stonecrop family. This ghost plant is a common plant you might find in the stonecrop family. In total, there are 1,400 species. They're succulents and really common as potted plants here, something you might have on your windowsill because they don't require a lot of care, or as a living roof, as you can see here. Likely, their ancient ancestors were really good at storing water in harsh conditions like in the desert. Their leaves, you see, have a very unique physiology. They are thick and they hold a lot of water. They also have a special kind of photosynthesis called CAM photosynthesis, which stands for Crassulacean Acid Metabolism, named after the name of this family. 
That alone, to me, just makes it a cool plant. But what's more, in the history books, this is listed as a medicinal plant. Carl Linnaeus. Carl Linnaeus, right here. Who I got to visit his university while in Sweden last time. Named roseroot Rhodiola rosea in his landmark 1753 work, Species Planetarium, and noted its historical and folklore uses. Notably, it was used in Siberian folklore to boost endurance and resilience to harsh climates. That gave it an almost mythical status in those cultures. In traditional Russian medicine, it was considered a natural adaptogen and is included in herbal tonics to prolong life and improve stamina. And like I noted, Vikings used it for strength and endurance too. Even the father of medicine, Dioscorides, wrote about it in 77 AD in Demeteria Medica. And that means it has a long history of use and has been mixed into European culture for ages. But we are at a time in history where herbal medicine and herbal remedies have all but been dismissed. And it's not because the herbs don't work. You see, our current practice of medicine likes to take one particular compound in a plant, bottle it up into a pill, and then treat symptoms. But we are slowly starting to realize that there are benefits into taking a more holistic approach to medicine. And that can include using herbal remedies like rhodiola as part of your daily routine. So what I'm trying to do for all of you here is introduce you to this amazing plant and summarize the research in a couple of different fields so it's very easy to understand. For instance, if you're an athlete and you want to try to improve your endurance or strength, rhodiola is a great supplement. There are at least 16 studies which have been analyzed and summarized by Dr. Grant Tinsley at Texas Tech and Dr. Andy Galpin. Look at the literature, it's pretty clear that there's some, some potential benefits of rhodiola. And in their review, they more or less stated that rhodiola is very promising. The breadth of exercise relevant outcomes where there were potential benefits is interesting to me, um, but there were enough in a broad enough category that um, I think it generally provides some level of support for the idea of adaptogen being kind of um, resistance to stress in a broad capacity. And that's how adaptogens were, you know, first defined in the, the literature. Yeah. And fortunately for us, they left a detailed dosing protocol as a section of their research paper. I'm going to leave the link down below, but essentially 500 to 1500 milligrams is what they used. They also noted there are over a hundred bioactive compounds in this plant, but the most notable are rosevins and salidrocytes. So if you can get a supplement like this one that talks about the percentage of rosevins and salidrocytes, then you you know you're getting a good one. And then there are the studies about the brain. Now, granted, a lot of these studies are not done very well, as pointed out here. Several studies on rhodiola rosea are horrible. And of course, that's just a money issue. Somebody has to pay for these studies. Fortunately, none of them showed negative side effects, and they all seem to show a glimmer of hope, which Nicholas Verhoeven here, who runs a science channel on YouTube, where he does deep dives on the scientific studies of these supplements, talked about briefly. There are, however, a few well-done studies that still indicate benefit. And considering the effect size and the wide-reaching benefits, it is enticing to give it uh, one of the higher scores. And he, like almost everyone that talks about it, has anecdotal evidence of its benefits. Within about 45 to 60 minutes, I noticed a significant difference. It felt like my stress had detached from my body and uh, mind. I felt much better, much calmer. There are lots and lots of people who have anecdotes just the same. In fact, I wanna hear from you. Leave your comment down below if it has worked for you because I think the community here gets a lot of benefit from that. So what's the takeaway for this plant? Well, I come to this, of course, as a biologist. I like to go into the wild and find these plants. It has unique adaptations to live in extreme environments and it has a long history of use. And there are a lot of studies. I'd love there to be even more so that I could say definitively, here's the exact numbers of how it helps you in different ways. But it has very low risk and very little side effects. And it might be something that you wanna try yourself, especially if you're dealing with things like anxiety, uh, mental fatigue, you wanna boost your endurance but here's where a lot of this is fascinating. You can start yourself and figure out if it's good for you because everybody has a slightly different physiology. I'm a big advocate of learning to understand your body, listen to it while you're taking these things, write it down. Does it help give you more energy? Does it help give you better sleep? You don't have to always go to a doctor to let them tell you what works for your own body. That's the way I see it anyway, and that's part of the philosophy here on the channel and through the work that I'm doing in Stone Age Man. One of the things I'm always striving to do is get the 
best info. I scour the web, I try to find the research studies, I go out and find these things in the wild, but that's extremely difficult and it means I spend way too much time on these videos. So I do want to thank my patrons and I want to thank all of you who potentially will go over there and help support the work that I do. Thank you again for watching and we will see you in the next one. Hope you enjoy that. Rodiola Rosea from the beautiful Norwegian mountains. Uh, stay tuned for more videos like this. All right.